So, I mean, you are the, the true queen of the su supernatural TV. So with that in mind, when picking a, a, a project from within this, this world, from within that kind of genre, does it take, is there even more kind of consideration that has to take place to make sure it's really right? Or can you still go off instincts like, like maybe you always have done? That's actually a good question. You know, it's a little bit of both because choosing this project was actually, was a combination of the two. It's not that I've stayed away from it for any other reason. It's really hard to live up to or do something that's that different. And what I realized ultimately was it doesn't have to be something that's that different because the reason that I loved it stayed the same. So I think all these years, I was looking for it to be so different to realize that it just needed to be different, but the core was the same. And what I've always said that I loved about Buffy was the monsters were the metaphor for the horrors of adolescence. We're in Wolfpack using these monsters for the metaphors of the horrors of sort of what we're all experiencing right now, which is high levels of anxiety, isolation, this whole idea that as we become more and more digitally connected, we're becoming ultimately more and more emotionally disconnected, and fires, and what it's doing to our earth and to our animal kingdom. And, and what I really traced it back is, it's really about the horrors in our mind. We make up these stories to explain the things that scare us. And so when you go through all that, it just, this project hit in a way that, and I think also post COVID, it, especially the whole isolation, the idea of finding your pack and having those people and, and what it's like when you're drifting kind of alone without that. And it just, on impulse, that's where the impulse came in. I was like, I kind of want to do that. Like it was just, a, I, think every, I think I shocked everybody. I shocked myself, I shocked my team. I shocked Jeff Davis when I said yes. Yeah, because I mean, do you think that's what keeps this kind of genre forever kind of relevant? Is that because it's reflecting, because the monsters are manifestations of our of our fears and anxieties and because it's reflecting back. That's exactly yeah. why I think it still works because mm. what scares us will always stay the same. It's the things we can't explain, the things in ourselves, the things that are out of our control, like that doesn't change. What makes us laugh might change. In fact, we were just talking earlier, what made us laugh a long time ago is so inappropriate now that we would see it and we wouldn't laugh because we'd be horrified, right? Or things that made you or didn't make you emotional, did or didn't years ago, make, you know, it, all that changes. But the things that like ultimately really do scare us, that those don't change. No one's ever like, yay, fire coming at me. Yeah, yeah. yeah exorcism, yay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yay, exorcism. <laughs> um, but I, mean, I don't even think people go, yay, exercise. No. Forget that, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is obviously, I mean, I get the sense, I've watched two episodes, but I get the sense it's a bit of a slow burner. And I was wondering about, for you, did you kind of get all the scripts at first? And did you kind of get to go on that experience that the audience is slowly going on? Or did the scripts kind of trickle through as you were making it? No, I knew. <laughs> I had it all. I mean, bits and pieces, but I, I had it all. But for the, for the rest of the cast, a lot of it was a surprise. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I mean, in terms of like your character, because there's not too much is kind of given away. Does that give you, in some ways, even more freedom, more license to create a kind of a world and a backstory for her? No, because she has a story and a backstory that I knew. And so for me, it was an interesting way to go up. Normally, my characters, it's so upfront. Like, you know why they're there, what they're doing, what their goal is. And this is the total opposite. So I had to play just straightforward. But when you watch it later, it all has to make sense, what was happening. And there are some scenes that you've seen in these early episodes that will then get repeated at the end, and you'll understand what was really happening. So it has to work for both versions. And I, uh, I interviewed Rodrigo last week. Did just you? On Zoom. He's the best. He was great. We spoke about football for a little while, which I always have a habit of doing. But um, um, You forget I'm an American. Yes. <laughs> so you were discussing something else yes. in my world. That's true. Something I we don't spoke understand. about soccer. Something I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> but if you want to talk football, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm not very good on that front. Um, but I just wonder if you felt, because obviously the two, now the more sort of experienced heads on the set, did you almost feel like a sense of responsibility now at this sort of stage in your career to, with the kind of younger performers? And, and with that in mind, did you have someone when you sort of first started that really helped give you some sort of guidance in that regard? I always feel responsibility on set, especially as a producer. I think you are responsible. I think that the safety and well-being, all of it, it comes from there. So I, any set that I'm on, I, I, I think I take on that responsibility. I think that, I th I'm sure Rodrigo probably said the same thing. It, people keep asking us that, and it, it's actually the reverse. It's what we could learn from them and remembering how to see the world the way they see it and to be open to new ideas. Because when you've been doing it a long time, you kind of have your ways. But it doesn't mean that there aren't better things to take from other people. I'm interested too, when you sign up to a new series, do you have to do that 
thinking this could be something that sort of is quite a commitment that could go on a few years? Or do you always just have to treat every project just as a kind of one-off? Or do you, because I mean, like with Buffy, when you signed on to that, did you ever envisage how many years it could have run and how sort of dedicated a, bit, a big part of your career it could have been? Well, it's different because when you're new and up and coming, you have to sign for seven years. It's different now because yeah. I don't have to do that. <laughs> Um, and I was going to ask, ask too, I mean, and just going back to Buffy quickly, but just could you tell it was, because now we've got the kind of benefit of time, it's just such an iconic kind of character. Could you tell in the moment it was an iconic character? Was that ever something oh, you were iconic able... iconic character, yeah. yes. Did I think it would have the, be what it was and have legs? No, I had no. I mean, you have to remember we were a mid-season replacement on a network nobody knew about in America based on a failed movie. Like, the odds were not in my favor. I just loved the character and I, I wanted to be a part of it. It was the best script that I'd read in so long. And not that I had my pick and choose of anything. I was auditioning and auditioning and auditioning, but that script, I just was like, wow, that's there. And, you know, the rest was all pleasant. That's one of the things that could sort of come out of, of Wolfpack is it could potentially bring in another new audience that could then go back and, and watch Buffy. Do you ever sort of go back and watch your own stuff? Or do you ever sort of find yourself... I try sort of, not yeah. to, just because I feel like if I have that kind of time, there's got to be something better I could be doing than watching myself. But I was actually just saying earlier, sometimes now I've gotten to the point where like if I'm flipping and it comes on, I stop for a couple seconds because it's not so much about watching the performance or watching or any of that, but it's about remembering where I was at that time, who I was at that time, there's always these like great stories that sort of come up. So maybe for a little bit, um, but most of the time, because my stuff is usually not child, child appropriate, most of the time I like, quickly change the channel because, you know. Yeah, do you always, always remember where, so if you watch a sort of scene, do you always remember like what happened that day? No, 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 no. In fact, I've seen whole episodes of Buffy and been like, was I in that episode? Um, no, I wish I, I'm, I say, I'm such a disappointment to people sometimes because I'll be, they'll be like, remember the button? I'm like, I, sure. <laughs> Does it ever get normal though? You sort of mentioned that you might be flicking around on the telly and you just go over to a channel and then there's your face just pops up. Is that something that just after being in the industry a number of years or being in enough projects, that, that, that just becomes quite normal? Or does it still sort of... That's funny you say that. I guess I never thought about it. Like that would be weird for you to turn the TV. And <laughs> yeah, like, I've never I seen just... that. But it's not, what's weird is that it's good because otherwise it might be, you never know where you might Could see it. Could be the something. news, yeah. Um, yeah that's, that's right. Thank you for explaining yeah. that joke. Thank you. The explainer over here. Um, that's funny, I've never thought about it from the, because for me and like a lot of people in my life, like sometimes I'll flip and I'll see somebody else, I, you know, or my kids will be like, Auntie Selma's on TV or whatever. That's so interesting. You know, sometimes I also need to remember that. I need to see it from, that's actually really cool. I'm gonna take that, now I'm gonna think about that next time now. Yeah. But I, I, Especially if I see you on TV. I was gonna say, if you see me, if you see me on TV, go, ah. Uh, Send money. You finally made the news, yeah. <laughs> um, there's something about- Do you oh, Venmo bail now? Yeah. Is that a thing? But, Could you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if you can do that. Not that I'm asking for no. any reason, I'm just wondering. <laughs> but I was, I was going to ask about werewolves. What do you think it is about that? Because we were talking about earlier about monsters and sort of different types of monsters, but there's something that's so reoccurring about werewolves that throughout sort of time has always appealed to people's imaginations, to storytelling. What do you think it is about that particular monster that keeps its place in... Well, I think it's where it came from. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you go back to a time when there were not street lights and house lights and flashlights and all of that, and you know, one month a year, one, sorry, one month a year. This is what happens when you've been speaking all day. One day a month, the moon came out so bright that you saw things and you saw things you didn't want to see or you saw things you didn't understand. So that was the explaining those things. And isn't there always things in our mind that sometimes we see much more clearly that we don't want to see? And I think because of that, it just always works. It's very funny before I go, could you reckon we could see more of Wolfpack as a, hopes and aspirations for more seasons after this? I think so. I think I got, maybe have one more in me. I mean, I, it, 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 well, I can't, I can't say anything because it's so hard to, you know, how do, maybe, maybe the werewolf gets me in episode three. I don't know. It doesn't get us. Episode four, I guess you. Okay, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> five. No, I'm just yeah. well, Thank you so much for your time. Thank much you. appreciated. Lovely to meet you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey, you guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!